I'm your host, DJ Mitchell, here to go over the five-game Friday slate. We have, uh, I would say, up and down slate of action here, um, starting at 7 uh, and Eastern time and going two games at 9. So a little bit of an earlier night on Friday. Uh, enjoy a couple beers and watch two very, very close kind of games that are basically a, a coin flip and three pretty heavy favorites on one side of the other with a couple, with one massive, massive favorite. We're going to get to all of them. Um, so first off, make sure you're following me at DJ underscore Mitchell 94. I'm going to be pretty MIA this weekend. I'm going to a wedding for one of my really good buddies who does some behind the scenes work for Morning Skate Podcast, um, Doug Levy, who, you know, he was a day one member, I guess, if you will, but he does so many amazing things analytically and I'm excited to be at his wedding. So I'll be in Columbus, Ohio, a destination wedding, as you're probably assuming is, is accurate. Yes, it is. Um, and I can't wait to see him and, and moods and kind of get together and we might have a couple beers, who knows, but we're going to get into the five games. Um, and then I will next week, I'm planning on at some point getting together the video I'm going to do on kind of predicting the lines. I didn't do a fantastic job on Thursday. Uh, I think I'm learning more about how they're moving the odds based off the information. I, I think that I got, I think what well, I did four bets. And I think two of them went the right way and two of them went the wrong way. That's the first time I had any move in the opposite direction for me. And I think I've realized why. So I'm getting more information and I'm excited to actually deliver hopefully some more really interesting sort of, uh, I, I guess, strategies to betting in general. Um, but let's get into it right now. I'm wearing my Thrasher's jersey today, in case you're wondering if you're watching along. And if you're not, you're missing out on seeing a beautiful blue Thrasher's jersey. Um, but we're going to start with not the Thrasher's because we can't. Detroit at Pittsburgh. Um, Pittsburgh is going to be on a back-to-back, -back, a home, true home back-to-back. -back. They're playing Seattle on Thursday. The game hasn't started yet. As of recording, it starts about an hour. And they're monster favorites at home. Now, Pittsburgh's been very freaking good. They've been one of the best teams in the league. It is a back-to-back, -back, but it's a home back-to-back. -back. I kind of think the line's going to move a bit more in favor of the Penguins. Eventually, right now, we have it at minus 230. I think it's going to end up more at the minus 250 range. So I think that's where I would bet it now, except the books seem to really, <laughs> a little teaser, I guess, for the future. They really, really don't seem to have any idea who's starting in net. It, it's kind of funny how they just use no contact clues or information. And as soon as the goalies hit, they change it. And that's something I've noticed is as soon as the goalies are posted, the line is going to move. So I think it might end up right around here, if not a touch more in favor of Pittsburgh, just it, because if they do win against Seattle, that's, you know, I think it's a pretty good spot where the line is now. Maybe it goes up a little bit, but Jari is in net for them on Thursday. I can't imagine he's on a back-to-back, -back, but he's played more games than I think everyone except for one other goalie, and I'm not sure who it is off the top of my head. Um, so unless they give him the back-to-back, -back, but I, I'm doubtful. Uh, Detroit last game was on Wednesday. They really valiant effort, I'd actually say in a eight to five loss, then Delkovich just got steamrolled. He's been really great all year and this was not his best showing. I'd assume we see Grace. It just kind of seems odd to put Nadelkovich back out there after that game against Chicago where he just got boat raced. I mean, really, really not a good night for him in any capacity. Um, or, I mean, either goalie. Yeah, I mean, the expected goals were 2.8 to 2.6 and the game finished eight to five. I mean, that is... That's pretty astounding. For those of you who bet the over, congratulations. If you bet the under, I am sorry those goalies didn't show up to play. Um, actually, Picard backed up. So maybe, oh, yeah, Grace is out. So Picard might be the goalie in that. We did see um, the, some lines for them in practice, which did kind of replicate what they ended up with in the game against Chicago. It was Nemestikov with Larkin and Raymond. So he could be a little bit of value on this DraftKings slate because no one's going to play Detroit. So if you end up getting him in the mix there, but he's not in the first power play, he just gets six, you know, 16, 17 minutes of ice time and he has a decent shot. So it's not undoable. That second line in Detroit was, was a bit, uh, the highs and lows. They had what three or four goals against, and they scored three goals, the Bertuzzi, Suter and Fabry line. Pius Suter has kind of always been a pretty good rate shooter that has good offensive metrics and just terrible defensive metrics. So I doubt they're going to put him against the Crosby line. Maybe you think that they, they do well um, as a unit against a, a weaker Pittsburgh line, if they can dictate that in any capacity, but 
if they are out there against the Crosby line, I think they get absolutely crushed. On uh, the Pittsburgh side, that and that's where you're going. I mean, it's Crosby, it's Rust, it's Gensel. It's priced way up on DraftKings. It's going to be not overlooked on this slate with, um, you know, it's kind of Pittsburgh, Colorado, and Boston. It's like people are going to go and put their ownership there. It's where it's going to be. If you go Pittsburgh, you should run a four-man stack. I just, I would be absolutely shocked if Pittsburgh goes for five or six goals and a four-man stack just end up taking down the DFS slate. Now, if you're playing cash games, you could probably get away with just playing Rust and Gensel. Uh, you know, you kind of get away with that. But if you're playing high stakes or, or not even high stakes, just if you're playing GPPs that are like $15, 20K to first, I cannot imagine you're oftentimes going to find a way to win without a four-man Pittsburgh if Pittsburgh is the ideal stack of the night. Um, their top power play also had Malkin. So I think he would be the easiest guy to put with Gensel, Crosby, and Rust and then find a really cheaper stack elsewhere, which we can get to. Um, that Yeah, that probably sums up that game. No props or unbelievable standouts. I've been pretty high on Rust as a player in general, but the, the shooting is never... It's never a perfect science with these Penguins. Last time out, Rust ended up with exactly three shots on net. He just hit, while Crosby ended up with five shots on net. And then two get blocked and one miss. So it's hard to know exactly where it's going to derive from. But I trust Rust more than most of these players to consistently shoot. Um, I, I guess would be the best way to put it. And, and well, Gensel too, but his three and a half is just not something I'm enticed by. No one really on the Detroit side. I've been kind of here or there on Bertuzzi as a play, but I don't trust it enough. And they move the lines. No, thanks. We'll move over to Minnesota at the Rangers. The Rangers on a back-to-back, but is a going from the road to home back-to-back, which is, which is not normally what we see. They are very, very slight favorites as of right now. I believe we have them at, yeah. So they're minus 105 to the minus 115. So almost a true pick them, but not quite. It's tough because these are kind of two teams that I, I feel very similar about. They're two teams that I think are, playing very well. I, I would say slightly outperforming um, what might be the expectation, but that's just skill-based. I don't think that's something that I would say is because they're, you know, it's any, I think it's definitely a skill-based type of situation. And when I see something like that, I, I like both teams and I've been kind of betting on both teams in many capacities. I mentioned the wild as one of my favorite bets the other night. And it's hard for me to, to really side one way or another here. I think this could be a spot where if the Rangers steamroll Columbus to number on Thursday night and end up winning up, let's say they win just like the uh, Flames did. They win like eight to one. And this line tomorrow ends up with a big plus money sign on the Wild. Wait, hold on. Did I say the Rangers were favored? The Wild are favored. Yeah, whatever. Um, but if we end up seeing plus money on the Wild, then I jump on it. But at this rate, I'm not going to touch it. It just feels like a stay away. There's not enough kind of incentive for me to think well this game feels like a coin flip i don't have a strong lean either way and then i'm gonna bet it I, I, you know if we end up getting plus money on the wild i'd take it you shop it around maybe you'll find it somewhere but it's not something that i'm i'm incredibly high on on the other hand if we look at the wild in their previous games it has been just amazing to see everyone's shooting everyone's scoring you know fiala's kind of had a bit of an emergence that we were hoping to see you know kind of always expecting um Granted, last game out was against Montreal where they scored eight. Uh, that that uh, uh, Erickson Eck, Greenway, Felino line is really good. And they're not going to be a line that I think is super strong in DFS. But, you know, Felino and Greenway do get power play time. So it's not egregious to think that you couldn't play them. Matt Bodley was one of the highest owned players on the slate against Montreal. And on that January 24th slate, he ended up being with Gaudreau and Fiala. Um, he ended up being on the second first power play and scored on the first power play. So I think people will be back on him. He's a really highly touted prospect. And then obviously the top line, Hartman, Zuccarello, and Kaprizov isn't going to get overlooked. It's all power play correlated outside of Hartman, who was on the second unit. But I think you can kind of you can play around with it. Um, the Rangers have not played yet as I'm recording, but they their coach well not their coach their beat writer actually said that he witnessed them running though they ran their normal lines their normal lines kind of you know the Kreider um Kreider's going to be with the binge and then Panarin with Strom and then they kind of bounced in the other two but he said they actually noticed during practice they were using the Panarin Zabinajad and Kreider line more often which is what I talked about last show uh and they ran they actually played that line which was really cool to see that I kind of nailed that so it does kind of seem like if the Rangers aren't seeing that spark 
they're not getting going and they're not finding any offense that they're just going to flip it on a dime. Galan's just going to say, all right, we're running the top line. It's going to be Panarin. It's going to be Kreider and it's going to be um, Zvinijad. So that is a really interesting angle that I think I'm going to be kind of keeping an eye on is running a four man with Fox and those three get all the power play correlation and just hope that in games where they get down on smaller slates like this, maybe I run a couple players on the wild and I say, all right, well, there's going to be two players in the wild that are going to get multi-point nights and that's going to make the Rangers do this. You know, it, it's just kind of a contrarian way. And this is something people do in football. They build game scripts and there's like 10 football games and no one thinks they're crazy, but in hockey, it's like, Hey, you can't be doing that. And I, I just don't agree with it. So um, the other note here is that the Rangers started uh, Georgiev on Thursday. So we should see Shesterkin, which also Vegas does not probably know right now, which is why I'm also thinking this line moves in favor of the Rangers a little bit more. If they win by, if they win big and then they're getting Shesterkin, I think the Wild could be at plus money by the time you're listening to this or maybe later in the afternoon on Friday. The next game is Colorado at Chicago. Huge news here is Nathan McKinnon. He went out with a now confirmed broken nose in the game. Taylor Hall hit whatever you think of it, it's up to you. Um, it was, you know, somebody I, I Twitter kind of blew up with like, this is the dirtiest hit ever. And then like, this wasn't that bad. And I don't know, like it's a hit and the, the, the he broke his nose. So do it, do with that what you wish. Um, no definite indication if he's in or out, but it really seems to me like he's not going to play. Um, that is definitely not good for Colorado, but you know, they're playing Chicago. So if we look at what they ended up doing, they just moved Kadri up to Ranton and Landis called Kadri. Makar and Taves played 32 and 31 minutes respectfully. And both of them kind of filtered in with that top power play as much as possible. So, I, you know, I do think if you need a bit of a savings, it's doable to put it with Taves instead of Makar, just because it, it, they're pretty vastly different in pricing. But Makar is obviously the, the, the alpha here. If you're going to run that four-man stack, again, you're going to need savings. Uh, it's obviously like this I don't, i'm trying to think if you can even do it with Makar and actually build a lineup that works and luckily as i'm recording they just released a slate how lucky are we so let me, let me pull it up let's see if we're going to do this so college 6900 that's you know 2000 cheaper than mckinnon if he doesn't play ranton in 77 landis 62 and then taves is a 2300 discount on Makar. now it's just kind of like I think it's it's accurate that like Makar is a much better play and much better player offensively. I mean, 41 points in 37 games, obviously. So if you can get Makar, you can get Makar. You probably have to punt in net. And if you are playing a four-man Colorado stack, you're kind of praying that another team like Pittsburgh or Boston just lays an absolute egg. So I would really suggest just playing one of the goalies. Like just say, you know what? Fine, it's a Vigmelka night. Although Wedgwood did actually supposed to start, but that's kind of how I think you build a GPP team you feel good about. So, I mean, Picard, and yeah, you could still make a lineup work. You have about 3,600 remaining per play. So it is going to be doable to run that four-man Colorado stack. And I think I'll just find a way to do it just to see if I can't capture all the upside in the world with this team in a good spot. Now, Chicago has been better this year. I mean, they were a punching bag last year as far as letting teams just kind of get goals and and their expected goals number against were really high they're a bit better this year uh, i i do think that in general this team isn't terrible but yeah i don't think they have hold much of a of a chance here i think that colorado is a much better side but the betting line isn't enticing enough for me to want to bet it the over feels good but six and a half is steep i might see myself getting there um to the over but other than that i'm probably not gonna bet colorado I do think the line is going to move if McKinnon's in, but I'm not really buying that being super likely. It's a road game. Yeah, I think I just probably take the over, if anything. I like this game's upside quite a bit. Um, and we can move to the second to last game of the night, which I just kind of alluded to, which is Arizona home against Boston. Um, yeah, I don't think I need to say much about Arizona. They're, they're terrible, but... They randomly pull these crazy games off once in a while. Uh, Boston has been on the beginning kind of, I think second or third game of a kind of long West Coast trip. And if it wasn't Wedgwood, I'd consider it, but it, it's not Wedgwood. I mean, it's minus 330, right? So we got it at, yeah, minus 330 Boston. Like, no, thank you. I, I just, 
I'm not betting it either side. I don't like this matchup for Arizona. I think Boston was kind of trending towards paper tiger material and they turned it on and they look a lot better now. Um, it, it was sort of like Pasternak wasn't scoring and then Pasternak started scoring and the whole team just looked so much better. So yeah, I'm just really not that interested in betting this um, in general, just not enough meat on the boat. I mean, how much money do you have to bet on Boston to make it feel like you win anything, right? You put a hundred dollar bet and you win 33. Like, come on, like, we're not doing that. Like, I just, it's not how I bet. This is not how I do it. If you have a hundred thousand dollars to bet and you feel good about Boston, like have at it, but I'm not winning, you know, uh, uh, like a, a, a halfway decent dinner for one, <laughs> like, like on, on a hundred dollars, it's just not how I bet in general. So I'm not going to say I would, I'm going to place it over under at six. It, it feels okay. But Arizona really has honestly like outperformed their expected goals. And I think they're going to kind of come back to light, to come back down to earth. Uh, not that interested. They were expected to get 1.5 goals against Pittsburgh and they scored three. I don't buy it. Um, just kind of thinking that Boston can take that away. And I think Boston will play a real slow paced game. So I like the under here in general. Um, I think that Boston's goaltending could maybe turn it around a little bit like Rask had that one absolute dud of a game but may maybe he plays okay here and you know if Arizona can't get one or two I doubt Boston gets you there so I'm fine with just taking the under six and moving on from this game but I might not even take it in general just feels really gross um I'll look at the shot props instead Arizona gives up an absolute monster amount of shots you can talk me into a few different things uh posture not probably the easiest take and just hoping that if it's three and a half yeah, he just probably goes out there and does it. Um, that's probably the way I'm going to angle this. Just look into what prop I like the most and go with it for, for shots. So final game of the night, Washington at Dallas. Um, it's a pick em. It's Washington on the road at Dallas, five and a half. Washington, I would say, very much underperformed in their past few. They've lost a few here, kind of going straight. They lost to Vegas at home. They lost to San Jose at home. And now they go to Dallas and a pick em. <sighs> I don't know. Dallas won a few games on the road that they got really lucky against New Jersey that they had a, you know, fourth string, you know, AHL guy in net. But I do think this double uh, this Dallas team is actually good. So I think I want to, I don't know, but I kind of think Washington is better than they played too. So yeah, I, I think I'm going to, I'm going to say Dallas. I mean, it, it really does feel like a pick up like I, in every capacity, like there's not one number or metric that's super hard leaning one way or another. I do think this line will move a bit closer to a Dallas favorite. Like, I think that they'll be a favorite by the time this locks because they should return um, two players. Fotska and Klingberg should be back for them. So I think that gives them the edge here. That kind of just takes away one of their defensemen like Sakara and Hanley that is, isn't useful and puts in a, a good offensive-minded player that should be back on the top power play. Uh, that top line has just been so freaking good for Dallas. And I don't know if Washington really has an answer. So I'm, I'm fine with taking Dallas here. The over under five and a half, it's like, yeah, you could talk me into it. Um, what is the money line actually on it? I feel like it's got to be a minus something or other. Let's take a look. It's minus 120. So it'd probably get to six before lock. I think you probably bet that now. I think I think it should probably get there. I don't really trust either goaltending sides in this game. And there's Ovechkin, Hints, etc. Hints has really been one of the best players in the league. Uh, you know, really, really, really solid when he's when he's healthy, and we're seeing that this year. So I think that overall, I, I think that my favorite bet of the night. Um, I think probably I'm think I'm thinking. You know, honestly, if I'm I'm a lock in right now, I'm gonna lock in Dallas. I think that's gonna end up being a favorite minus one ten right now. Um, that that seems that seems strong. And that's really the only bet I'm like in the money line that I'm incredibly high on. Cause I think I want to get Minnesota at plus money if possible, if they're going to be minus minus one fifteen and the, and the Rangers are slight underdogs at home, I'm just not going to do it. That just seems useless to me. So I think that's probably the one and only money line. I really, really like as far as over unders, I, I think I'll just do the six and a half for Colorado, Chicago right now, just grab that over. I don't trust the goaltending. I don't think that Colorado is defensively. It's too bad, but I think I think they'll push the pace and Chicago can find goals. They've been they've been really good lately. So I think those are probably my favorite two in that capacity. And then props, uh, you know, it's been my problem is that in New York, I just don't have them right now. So I can't see anything and I don't know where these lines are. So I, I feel just kind of I, there's nothing I can even do. I cannot get them. There are nope, can't see them. So I really am going to be looking into the games I like the most as far as pace is concerned, which is obviously Colorado, 
and Chicago. I think Boston should have a good chance to, to keep the pace up and get a lot of shot attempts. Those are probably the spots I'll look to get some props in. Um, and then I'll probably pair that with the, the Dallas money line. So like I said, I'm going to take the singles on Dallas money line minus 110 and the over under over six and a half minus 110. I think those lines could get a little bit better, but we'll see at puck drop on Friday. Um, gone long enough for this one. We'll be back next week. I'll have a Monday show. I'll have a Friday show and I'll have a, a little something extra. I'll be guest starring somewhere on Saturday. So keep a lookout for that. And then I'm going to get the bonus out there. I will get ready. And then whenever they want to release it, it's up to them at the Mail Media Network. So take care. Enjoy your weekend. Um, and cheers to Doug. I'm sure you're not going to listen to this before your wedding, but cheers. Cheers. <laughs>